hey guys, with the release of Dryladon, we also got a new balance patch, so it's time for a new tier list. Before I go into the tier list, I would please appreciate if you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, you can become a member of the channel today and unlock some, unlock some cute emotes to use in the comment section. All right, as always, you guys know I do two tier lists, a lane and a jungle tier list, so let's start with the lane tier list. I've added an S plus now, an S plus tier, you will see why soon. Venusaur is still insane character, doesn't matter what, Venusaur has not changed. Still, it's one of the best lane carries in the game, if you want to play. Gengar, honestly, Gengar is like half of me to side. Like, honestly, nah, I mean, he's a CT, right? Like, he's not, he's not a good laner. I think he can work sometimes just because his power spike is level 5 now. But I still don't think it's anything too special for where it makes a big difference. But honestly, I think I could slowly start more going him towards B. Because I think he's still better. Like, if he reaches level 5, he's actually quite fine in lane. But yeah, nothing really amazing. Mr. Mime, actually going to drop down a tier. From S to A tier. Um, just got a few nerves on confusion. Guardstop is quite nice now. It actually perma lasts on someone. But yeah, I don't think that makes up for how much confusion damage he lost. And in general, I feel like there's a lot of things in the game right now where he just struggles against. And yeah, I mean, honestly, I think still quite fine. I'm always, always going to keep playing him. But yeah, Snorlax, I mean, it really doesn't seem amazing to me whatsoever right now. Like, the like the longer I feel like the game is just keeps being out, Snorlax, I feel it just gets pushed out of the game. And I feel like he just doesn't do much. But like, I mean, he's still not terrible either, right? Like, he's he's a good laner. I'm still, still going to put him in A tier. Like, lower, towards lower A tier, but quite strong still. Gardevoir also, I think, is a solid A tier laner. Just because of future side level 5. You just have to make it to level 5, which is the hard part. But once you make it to level 5, it's quite hard to deal with Gardevoir. Can secure off last hits. Has very good mid and late game. And yeah, honestly... Much better lane than other characters. Absol, to me, Absol is still a very solid lane character as well. Easily at least A tier. Maybe, no, you know, not, 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 not much better than that, but I mean, you guys know I love lane Absol. Just, it just kind of struggles sometimes, especially since there's still a lot of, even though Slow Smoke are nerfed, there's still a lot of Slow Smokes, a lot of Wiggly Tufts, and it just makes it very hard for Absol to do stuff. Hooper saves the characters a lot as well. I've had a hard time team fighting into Hooper Unbound. Hooper and Bout is very, very hard to team fight into for Absol. And a uh, lot of mini stuns, a lot of HP on someone, and you just kind of die. So Hooper also kind of made Absol a bit worse. And if the guy plays Trick as well, he saves a lot of characters as well. Yeah, but it's still a solid A tier, I would say, for lane. Garchomp, Garchomp B tier. Um, not not the like worst laner, but also not really something wow, to write home about, right? Like, he's just there. Lucario, still absolutely broken. S tier. Lord Contestant, yes. Power Punch, Close Combat, Close Combat got nerfed. Slow Smoke got nerfed, but Extreme Speed Bone Rush says hello and is still absolutely broken as well. Krasse, Krasse has just a hard time lately. I feel bad for my boy Krasse. I still don't think he is like the worst lane, like the worst tier in lane, but for sure in the bottom half of A tier list, for sure. Guninja, terrible lane, I would not recommend. Talonflame. Honestly, Talonflame is quite, not, like, not the worst laner either. Like, he, he does work quite well in solo queue as a laner, but uh, he does need level 7, which is quite far away. Like, I always measure, like, how much these characters need their power spikes, and those power spikes are quite far away sometimes, right? So, like, level 7 for a lane does take quite a long long time to get to, so, yeah. But I think you can play him in lane. I would somewhere put him to lower A, higher B tier, and... Like in competitive, it can sometimes even work like as a solo laner, but this is like an overall lane tier list. This is not like not specifically to competitive, not specifically towards solo queue, just overall how I thought how like how strong I think this char these characters are in laning phase, right? Charmander or Charizard, also like not one of the greatest laners, but like I would still rather have a Charmander lane than like a Cinder or a Greninja in lane. Because just he doesn't need as many levels as other characters when he gets to level 9, he's quite strong. Text-wise, level 5 is also quite decent, but Lower B tier goes to Charizard. Zaora, also lower B, very low B tier. Nothing crazy. Does work as well, but I still rather have this than these characters, you know? Like, it's nothing amazing, but it exists. Cinder Ace, worst lane for sure. Edegos, even after the nerfs, I think Edegos is still an absolutely insane character. Deserves to be still in S tier. Cotton God got nerfed, but her Unite buff, her Unite move got buffed, so has lower cooldown now. Quite good. Cramorant. Bro, Krum, poor boy Cramorant getting a kind of nerf again. So he apparently has more damage after diving now, but it also means he left lost some damage. Like, 
it's kind of weird what they do to Cramorant. They also knocked Air Slash for some reason. Air Slash now has a hair cooldown. And Cramorant just can't take a break. Blastoise, 8 here. He's currently bucked, which could make him up towards here. But like, if you don't buck abuse, Water Spout didn't really change much. So he probably stays in the same tier. Pikachu still S tier, didn't get a single change. And now Ninetales. Ninetales is back to S tier, 100%. This character with Aura Veil is super, super strong. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. It's very, 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 very strong. And um, yeah, it's back to being a lane bully, absolute. And also, actually, I feel like I can carry late games with this build as well, very well now. The dash, the healing. Also, the booster attack is so much smoother now that like it, you literally have attack speed. Like you do more damage now than before. Much, much more damage because your boosted auto attack just happens faster and you can get your next one out much, much faster as well. So huge buff, bigly tough. Easily stay S tier, very, very strong. Very, very strong. And actually, let's put Lucario up here. Lucario probably still S plus tier. <laughs> Doesn't matter what. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to only have one character in there, which you will see soon, which is going to be the new character. But uh, we're going to talk about that in a bit. Slow bro, easily a higher A tier, I would say. Not low. Yeah, towards higher A tier. I don't quite want to put him in S tier. In competitive, he is S tier in, in lane, right? He's like one of the best bottom laners right now. But uh, overall in the game, I still think like he's he's quite solid. Higher A tier, easily. Competitive is always something a bit different, right? So can't take it by heart too much. But champ, very strong laner. Very, very good. Somewhere lower S tier, but still pretty good. Blissey. I mean, Blissey is not bad as well. Like, Blissey is... I would say an underrated character, but does quite its job. Pretty solid support. Safeguard is quite good. Unite move is quite good. With Duraladon being now in the game. Also another way to like protect him, and it is quite good together. I have to. I've already found out. Mammoth Shrine, higher B tier, nothing too amazing. Does exist. Sylveon is a solid A tier lane as well. Put it somewhere here. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna like rank these in their own tier, but yeah, solid A laner. And if you play Hyper Voice again, I say that every single time. Mystic Fire, Hyper Voice, Mystic Fire, Hyper Voice, Mystic Fire, Hyper Voice. All right, we got it. The right terrible laner. Um, Spirit Shackle could be fine though. Like I feel like if Spirit Shackle was a level five or level six ability, we could play main lane, right? But like the fact that it needs level seven just takes so long. But I, I think he slowly has potential with Spirit Shackle, but I would still just not play it in lane. Greedent got some nerfs um, for his early game, which are like for sure important. So I just messed with this early game a bit. Gonna put him into an A tier. Dragon Knight. Okay, I'm gonna put Dragon Knight in C tier because I'm actually tired of Dragon Knights being played in lane. I swear. This character is so useless in lane. Uh, it's just, it just doesn't scale. It doesn't get levels early on. It's... Uh, yeah, Dragon Knight. I think Dragon Knight in lane is just not not very good. Serena. Serena Stomp got buffed, but I still don't think it's anything amazing. Gonna put her somewhere in the higher B tier. Yeah, Triple X's defeat is quite weak. Did give more lifesteal baseline, but which makes Triple X a bit better again, because Triple X gives you attack speed, which means more life stealing, right? Um, overall, still not too amazing. I think Stomp is quite fine, but nothing I'm like, wow, this is so good. Like, it's game changing or anything. So, quite, quite average, I would say. Stay Trevenant also. The Wood Tamer buffs didn't really do anything. He takes less damage now, has a bit more boost speed. Nothing too crazy. Aegislash. Yeah. Aegislash is a weird kind of character. I think at some point he will have his time to shine, but I don't think it's quite yet. Hoop, I still think, is S tier. Um, yes, Hyperspace has a higher cooldown now, so you probably just play Trick, Shadow Boy more now than Hyperspace. But Hooper Unbound is just a, such an insane Unite move that, uh, yeah, changes team fights completely. And now this character. There he is, Duralodon, S plus tier. This character is absolutely crazy, doesn't matter where you put him. This character is just straight up overpowered. I don't know how other way to put it. I can play it in lane, I can play it in jungle. I can always have at least 100,000k damage, like literally almost every single game. Uh, it gets quite well through laning phase. As soon as you reach level 5, you're good to go. Of course, reaching level 5 does, like, it's not, it's not that difficult. Like, his early game auto-taking actually do a lot of damage as well. He can get kills early on, especially if you have a strong lane partner. And they're getting level 5 is quite easy. The only problem is that if the enemies have a jungle, Dralodon, yeah, you're gonna be outleveled by the enemy jungler and you might struggle because of that. But besides that, this character is absolutely nuts. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, this character is good in solo queue. I don't know how he will be in competitive, but like in solo queue, absolutely crazy character. And yeah, 
All right, that's it for the lane tier list. Again, if you have always any questions towards why I'm rating characters where they are, feel free to just ask me about it in the comments, and there's high chance I will probably reply and give you another explanation. All right, that's it for the lane tier list. Let's head into the jungle tier list, and we're going to start off with Duraladon, I think. He might be the best new jungler in the game now, especially if you have some form of protection. When he gets a level lead, he just pumps out damage on damage, and he has also very good objective secure with Dragon Pulse. Yeah, this character might be honestly the new best jungler in the game. I'm not, I'm really not over, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm overhyping this character, but he just seems so unbalanced to me. I really can't put it into other words. Um, I'm also going to have a jungle video about him up tomorrow, most likely, where we go over him in the jungle, because I only had so far lane um, games with him uploaded to my channel. So tomorrow I will make a video about how he is in jungle. And yeah, it is also very, very insane. Uh... Then we have, what do we have next? Machamp. And we have like a down jungle, right? Like down jungle doesn't... Right, do we even need this? I'm just going to not put characters in that down jungle, all right? And I think a B tier is enough. Like we don't have a C tier. Let me just delete this row. All right, perfect. That works. We have uh, Hooper doesn't jungle. Then we have Green. I mean, Green is like a counter invade thing. I think Venus is still easily an S tier jungler as well. Quite underestimated. Um, what does Spout... Blast toys without bugs was a fine jungler, used to be. And I think it had it would have potential again, but there's just so many strong characters in the game right now that I don't think it has a chance. Absol, solid A tier jungler, just again doesn't really have the late game power punch that you need as a jungler. Gardevoir is a very strong jungler, I feel like. There's just I mean there's just so many strong junglers. It's quite quite insane, but it's just how the jungle rule is, right? Jungle is just very, very polarizing. You get a level lead on carries, and your carry can be good, doesn't matter which carry it is. Charizard, also ST jungler, very, very strong. In my opinion, one of the top four junglers in the game. Zaora just falls off and falls off. Just very punished by not being a level, you know, 9 jungler. Not having Unite before level 9 hurts him way too much compared to all the other ones. And he's just not a late game hyper carry either. Tidal Flame, on the other hand, is the same, like in the same category as Zaora. But he actually does something. He has good objective secure. He has crazy damage with Brave Bird. He can either do all those slow things with Fly. And his Unite move just being solo cooldown just makes him very, very strong in teamfights as well. And yeah, very strong carry for solo queue or also team. Base things. Greninja. Um, so Greninja is easily, I would say, ST plus still as well. Same with Cinder Ace. I don't think those have changed. They're still very, very strong. But I think this character is just still a bit better than those are right now. Like, I think he might change the meta a bit in the jungle. He just might be the one. But who knows? I might be wrong. That's my first impression so far that I have from this character. That he's just gonna be absolutely insane. Dragon Knight, I think, drops down a tier. I think I had him in ST last time, not sure. I just feel like he doesn't really do much. He just gets outscaled way too hard. Like, all these characters do so much damage late game, right? Like, all of them. And he just doesn't do damage. And others, uh, these characters also have good objective secure. So, it's just really not that important anymore to have a Dragon Knight. Cause Hyper Beam did get a good nerf. And honestly, Duraludon, Duraladon also has very good objective secure now with Dragon Pulse, can rival it easily, and can probably even do boar damage. Tessidrui, honestly, I mean, I think Spirit Check is quite strong now, but like, I still have a hard time ranking him higher. Um, I did play some Tessidrui jungle, and he still has just some issues where he just gets ran over, but I think it has potential. Like, Spirit Check, I think, has potential now. It does quite a lot of damage. If your team plays around it, it brought your poke, it can be quite strong, but... It's still missing that something. Like, he still just gets overran a bit too easily. Gengar, I think I'm going to put Gengar an 8 here. Um, just, I think Gengar's quite strong. Like, he does crazy amounts of damage. It's just that if you mess up once, you die. Like, literally. You mess up once, you're dead. You, you get one shot yourself, you get stu stuck in one CC, you're going to die, you miss one skill shot, and the team fight might be over already. It's still very hard as well to fight late game and to body barrier team fights, but I still think he is pretty strong right now. And I wouldn't underestimate when you play against the Gengar, especially with Squishy. You probably should watch out not to run into him too much. Serena. Serena is in theory a good jungler because she reaches her power spikes quite easily. But yeah, you will just lose late games. If you have a Serena jungle, you will just lose late games. The enemy jungler just doesn't die to you and just farms as well. You're just going to get outscaled way too hard. And you will lose late game team fights by not having a really carry. Maybe it's good if, like, if you have like a lane Duralodon, you can maybe play something like Serena jungle. 
So I think Dralodon being also a laner does open up more of these junglers to be played again, like more supportive junglers like Machamp, Blastoise, Serena, you know, Talon. Like, I think those characters might get a buff just because Dralodon can be in lane and can be a late game carry on its own. But if the enemies have a Dralodon jungle, I think your ones just get complete, gets completely stomped at some point in team fights. Of course, you're going to be down two or three levels most likely for the early fights. So, but yeah, I think... This character might allow one of these to maybe shine and rise in priority. We shall see. It's still quite early to tell, and uh, but yeah, I want to still make a tea list for you guys, just so you know what you should be playing. And then the rest, I feel like you should just not jungle with, right? Like Garchomp doesn't impress me in jungle. Lucario, Lucario in theory is a fine jungle as well. I mean, honestly, Lucario jungle is not the worst. It's just this landing phase is so strong that it doesn't make sense. But it's the same scenario here, like, you can maybe just put him into jungle, get early power spikes, and then afterwards have this guy jungling or something, right? Like, he does the first rotation, gets level 5, goes to lane, and afterwards your Duraladon goes into jungle and takes over jungle, which could also quite work, but yeah. That's not really something that will happen in solo queue, but Lucario jungle is in theory not the worst, but I would not recommend doing it either. And I think that's it for the tier list. Aegis Slash, I mean, it's like the same, I guess. Like, these are all the characters that came in theory, jungle, Mystic of Fire, Sylveon, but like... Like, Mystic of Fire, Sylveon has, a, has its place in jungle, but it just also gets all scaled. Way too, way too hard. Way, way too hard. I, try, I wanted to try Ninetales jungle, honestly, because uh, maybe Ninetales jungle has a place now, but I feel like the clear would still be a bit too bad to make it to late game. Like, it does take quite a while for Ninetales to kill, you know, PvE stuff. Doesn't really have good Dreadnought secure either, so... Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for the tier list. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.